Okay, we're alive. I'm Joe Trozian, and this is the Birth of Faith Virtual Good Morning for March the 27th, 2023. It's about 9.52 in the a.m. I am happy to be here uh, and uh, happy to connect with some folks. This is our 34th broadcast of a ministry parole in terms of meeting with our young people, praying for our young people, not necessarily meeting with them. And we're going to be in Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. It's one simple verse. And we're going to share from there. And again, the whole purpose of this is being of a mind to be praying for our young people and for anybody that works in some spiritually hostile and climate climates. And we could also make that comment just about every place we go is a spiritually hostile climate in some way, shape, or form. Even the church can be sometimes, uh, but not a good church. All right, Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. And we're going to read, we're going to do an application, and then we're going to... Uh, Share some prayer requests, and we're going to move you guys on down the line on this uh, nice Monday that is messing with everybody's allergies. Okay, Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, pick it up at verse 20. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why, as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? Let's try that one more time. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why, as though you still belong to it, do you submit to its rules? Chock full of nuts here, right? There's so many things you can do with this. Uh, dying uh, with Christ, uh, giving up our lives for his life. Uh, and, uh, and, and why? Why do we put up with this world when we don't have to put up with this world? Why do we submit and let it dictate to us how we should feel and our motivations and even change what we would know would be core beliefs uh, that the Spirit has pushed on, put on us and is reinforced with the Scripture. And so there's so many things there. But the, acclamation, the, the application here, not acclamation, the application here for me is, uh, uh, the argument is here, don't let man lay things on you. Every plan, every tradition, every movement of man that is man-based, man-motivated, is doomed to fail, right? Everything is doomed to fail. Um, I cringe when I think about the things over the years that were of such priority within the church that had nothing to do with the scriptures but traditions and mindless repeti repetitions. And, and now there are new traditions that have leaked in. And again, mindless repetitions because there is a disdain for the, the average believer uh, on both sides of the aisle, whether you're a conservative Christian or a progressive Christian, uh, for those that are kind of caught in the middle there that just want to worship God, there is a disdain for for you that you need uh, uh, some form of mindlessness advanced on you because you don't know how to think. Well, between reading your scriptures and the spirit that dwells within you and a, and a believing loyalty in Christ, you don't need people to form your core beliefs or what you need to do. You just need to look at what the scripture says and what the spirit reveals. And, uh, and then you surround yourself with like-minded people. But we are so influenced by our heroes in the church. Uh, I got to tell you, I've been more influenced probably by the dedication of somebody who, uh, who just shows up to church every Sunday and sets up the communion table or is there to teach the kids far more than I was ever impressed with Billy Graham. I know that sounds crazy, and I'm not saying Billy Graham's a bad guy, but we have these heroes we put on platforms and... No, I, I, I want the grinder. I want the person who lives this faith day in, day out with little to no fanfare. And I cringe how we get so caught up in these things of, of uh, again, traditions and mindless repetitions, right? The scriptures go on to say in this very passage that I didn't quote, um, that all these things that man comes up with, right? They all have this appearance of wisdom, even piety. Uh, but they will not build you up or make you strong, right? Not when the moment of testing comes. That's my words, not the passage. On both sides of the yard, conservative and progressive, and despite what many think of me, I'm very conservative when it comes to my faith. Others uh, are way too progressive, almost conservatively progressive, I would say. But we all have our stuff that we guard unto death. And uh, I like my Nazarene theology. For me, for an example, I love my, I like our Nazarene theology, but I'm not dismissing anybody or sending anybody to hell if they don't agree with Nazarene theology, right? And Colossians 2.20 gives me this encouragement. 
so much so that I'm not guarding anything I can't defend in Scripture. It therefore follows that I'm not supporting or joining anything with the appearance of righteousness, but in truth is all about the vanity of the church and the goodness of man, or and or the goodness of man, right? We have a tendency to elevate ourselves up so much. I mean, not our tradition, but I, I get ill when I see ministers in robes. I do. I, I would never attend a church that's that liturgical, that high church. It, it makes me nauseous. It does. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like the appearance. I don't like the message it sends. In fact, I think I've had more success at Burbank because I'll show up like this and I look like you because you know what? We have different jobs. We all have a different calling in life that we do, but it doesn't mean I'm over you or I'm better than you. I might be shepherding you, but I'm not better than you. And I've got my own stuff that I deal with every day. And so when we fall for the vanity of the church and the goodness of man and all the good deeds we do, we passed out so many blankets and served so much soup. When we fall for these things, as we have in the past and continue to do presently, we don't prepare our young people, here's the point, we don't prepare our young people to stand, survive, and thrive in spiritually hostile places. Good morning, Mr. Stewart and whoever else is out there. We don't. We get them all caught up on the extracurricular stuff. Huh, man, don't have a Starbucks in church. Or you mean, what do you mean? You don't have a, a, a vegetable garden for the community? We get them all caught up in these other things, but we never prepare them to go stand, survive, and thrive in spiritually hostile places. But we've taught them, right? Nazarene, good Nazarene doctrine. We've taught them not to drink alcohol, to dance, or go to the movies. Uh, we've also taught them to feel guilty, ashamed, privileged, and bamboozled. And bamboozled them into believing they've made a difference because they picked up some trash and handed out some food. These all fail. They appeal to our vanity. Uh, and they continue to fail. They have failed, fail, and continue to fail. Um, what we need to do is to impart the reason for the hope we have on our young people. Christ, Christ crucified and, the resurrected, in the, and resurrected in the flesh the recognition of a need for a savior and repentance. These are the things that allow us, all of us, to stand in, in places that are spiritually hostile. It allows us to stand, survive, and thrive. And that is what our young people need. These are the things that will give us victory without any dependence on the wisdom of man. And so that, that is my encouragement today as I read that scripture since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why as though you still belong to it do you submit to its rules? And, uh, and I, I, I'm all for being respectful. I'm not trying to be a rebel here. But uh, I think our motivation in the church should be preparing people. It should be not, not, not letting them get a checklist of all the good they've done, but maybe preparing them for the reason, uh, of the reason why they have the hope they have. Um, maybe ground, grinding them and grounding them in uh, the, the resurrection and the flesh and the empty tomb. Maybe, maybe grounding them in the authority of Scripture, right? And the need for a Savior in our lives, right? Uh, maybe those are the things that will better equip our young people when they go into spiritually hostile places than, um, hey, I picked up some trash this week or I stopped a guy from drinking a Starbucks in the back pew, right? I mean, we do this all the time. Uh, and we need to mature as a church if we're going to prepare our young people. And that is the whole goal. We want to prepare, prepare and pray for our young people from pre-K through graduate school. And all of our leaders, right? Uh, the teachers that go into these spiritually hostile places. Um, the, the police officers that go into a spiritually hostile environment every day where they're sandwiched between regulations and, the, and what they see. We also want to pray for our politicians that, that one, that there are, I'm going to say 90% of them are corrupt, but we know there are some good people there, right? And we need to pray for them that they can stand, survive, and thrive in these spiritually hostile places. And also, we want to pray because our realm of battle our theater in this grand battle that is taking place, our theater is to show love, show compassion. And when we love, we love with sincerity, which means we have to speak hard truths, but we still love through that even when people disagree with us. Yeah. And we do want to pray in the heavenly realm that the spirit is just doing battle and laying waste to the enemy as it tries to influence those 
who influence others in this world. So we want to pray for our young people. We want to pray for revival to continue. Uh, Megan Meeks, one of my former students, her last name's not Meeks. I'm just saying Meeks, so some of you know who she is. Uh, she's got some liver and kidney issues, some cysts on there. We need to pray for her. A young woman named Jay was brought to me. This isn't Jay Sturgeon. Uh, this is a, a, a young woman through the internet. We're just using her name, Jay. Um, and the family is asking prayer for her health. Uh, and our people that are going through cancer treatment or cancer itself, Tammy Monk Voschel, Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, Rachel Gilbert, Colby Van Dyke, and this uh, young man in his 30s named Emmanuel, who's got stage four cancer. Uh, David Davies, we want to continue to pray for him. Uh, Darlene Carroll, her medical issues up there in the great Northwest. Her friend Kathy Duncan, who has some intestinal issues. And their mutual friend Ralph, who's battling COPD. Uh, Vision Paradise, our Armenian and our Spanish ministry, and we want to pray for our Armenian ministry, as well as all of our messages and sermons and stuff that we got going on. Two things you need to pray for is uh, we have got camp season is rapidly approaching, and sometime later today in the comment section, I'm going to post a link to where we got to get our 90 hours of prayer started for Granite Ridge for our CIT Academy that takes place at the end of June, and that is the most awesome, unique thing happening in any campground anywhere that I know of, and we train young people uh, to be leaders at camp, and we truly believe we're not just training future counselors, but we're training future directors. Talk about preparing our young people, right? Not to just stand, survive, and, and, and that, but to stand, survive, and thrive in their faith, and that's where we grind, ground them in the faith at CIT Academy and prepare them to serve. Also, our friends up at Angeles Crest Christian, they have been landlocked because of the snow and the blizzard-like conditions. It looks like something out of Little House on the Prairie. We want you to pray in prayer for Brian Shaw and his family. They're the on-site directors at Angelus Crest and uh, lift them up in prayer, as well as our needs at Burbank Faith in terms of our steps and uh, everything going on there. Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday is Communion Sunday. So if you don't go to church on a regular basis, you need to come to church once a month, maybe twice a month. Visit us at Burbank Faith. We'll serve you communion, and we won't make you a member. We won't put you on the board, and we won't give you a special project. If you want to tithe or give an offering from there, I'm going to leave that between you and the Lord. Thank you all for our support, for the support you've given us. And I think at the 12-minute mark here, I am ready to pray so we can get you out and get you going. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we do. We do pray for our young people today, God. Encourage them as they go from class to class, place to place, Lord. Let your spirit battle ahead of them, Lord, and diminish the voices that would diminish the work of your son, and let our young people feel empowered, whether in preschool or, again, Lord, in graduate school. And those folks, from politicians to, to cops to teachers that work in hostile places, Lord, reinforce their faith, Lord. Give them courage to stand, survive, and thrive, Lord, and, 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 and bless them today and uh, encourage them and diminish voices that would diminish you uh, when speaking to these people who are caught between a rock and a hard place. Lord, we continue to pray for revival, and we ask your blessings upon those we know, those we love, those we've met. Uh, we pray for Megan Meeks. We pray for Jay. Uh, we pray for those battling cancer or the treatment of cancer. Tammy Mungvashel, Bill Trollinger, Becky Valadez, Rachel Gilbert, Colby Van Dyke, and young uh, Emmanuel. Lord, we pray for David Davies. We continue to lift up Darlene Carroll, Kathy Duncan, and their friend Ralph. Vision Paradise, the Armenian ministry. Our ministries here at the church. Communion Sunday coming up. And Granite Ridge, our campground and uh, the signups that we're getting ready for our 90 hours of prayer for kids camp, CIT Academy, um, and uh, we're getting ready for those things, Lord. And we pray for our fellow believers at Angelus Crest who've suffered a lot in terms of the snow and everything. It's impacted them greatly, Lord. Keep them safe, keep them healthy, and help get them back on track again to, to be serving um, the community and those that go up there to meet you. Lord, we thank you for loving us, Lord. We thank you for the hope we have in you. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, cool. Look at this. Under 15 minutes. If you're there, leave a like, leave a share, leave a comment. Keep us in the algorithm of, uh, <laughs> of uh, Facebook because it's really easy to get bounced. Uh, God bless. Take care. And I will see you tomorrow.